My name is Jerry Leahy of the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment. Disinfection of public drinking water systems is mandatory in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Chlorine is the most common chemical used for disinfection purposes within the province. To ensure drinking water is being adequately disinfected, operators of drinking water systems need to monitor chlorine residual levels on a daily basis. Chlorine residual is the amount of chlorine remaining in the water as it flows through the distribution system. Daily monitoring of chlorine residuals verifies that your chlorination system is operating effectively and that the safety of your drinking water is protected. Daily monitoring, including weekends, is required under your permit to operate. I am here today to demonstrate the correct procedures for measuring free and total chlorine residuals in your water distribution system. There are a number of different methods available for testing chlorine residuals. The Government of Newfoundland recommends that you use a colorimeter type of test kit for field measurements. Whichever test kit you use, make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions accurately. Procedures may vary slightly according to the brand of the test kit. Staff of Water Resources Management Division and Service NL use the Hawk Pocket Colorimeter 2 for monitoring free and total chlorine residuals. This will be the test kit I'll be demonstrating. Once you have your test kit, the next step is to choose the location for sampling within your distribution system. A minimum of two sites should be sampled for free and total chlorine residuals in your system. You should also include a location near the first user on your system and near the end of the system. You may need to collect additional samples if your system includes multiple dead-end locations. Ensure that the location you choose for testing your chlorine residuals is appropriate for collecting water samples. Ideally, you should use a kitchen tap or another tap that is frequently used. The tap should have separate cold and hot water controls and be free from any leaks. You should also ensure that the building or tap does not have any type of treatment unit installed. This will interfere with your results. Chlorine residual testing must be conducted on site at the sampling location. You cannot collect your water sample and return to your work depot to complete the test. All testing and logging results must be done at the sampling location. The Hawk Pocket Colorimeter 2 operates by adding a chemical reagent to a sample of water taken from your distribution system. The presence of a free or total chlorine residual will be indicated by a color change in the water sample. The water sample will turn pink if a chlorine residual is detected. The amount of free or total chlorine will be determined by the intensity of the pink color that is present. This unit measures chlorine residual by shining a light through the sample bottle. The darker the pink color of the sample, the harder for light to shine through and the higher the chlorine residual. Therefore, anything else that may be on or in the bottle that could block light could interfere with the test. Make sure your sample bottle is clean with no stains, scratches, lint, or moisture in the bottle. Also ensure there are no air bubbles in the water sample. The first test I will demonstrate is the free chlorine residual test in low range. Low range on this meter allows you to measure residuals in the range of 0.02 mg per liter up to 2.2 mg per liter. If your chlorine residuals are higher than 2.2 mg per liter, you will need to switch your meter to the high range. Refer to your manual for instruction on how to switch your meter from the low range to the high range. You can also contact the operator trainer for your region for assistance. To start the test, you will first need to flush your sample tap for 5 to 10 minutes. This is done so that the water you are testing is fresh from your main line. If the service line to your sampling location is quite long, you may need to flush for a longer period. After rinsing, fill the bottle to the 10 milliliter line with water from the tap. Replace the cap and wipe the bottle with a lint-free cloth to remove any moisture. Press the power key on your meter. The display screen will illuminate and an arrow should indicate you are in the low range. Insert the sample bottle into the meter with the diamond on the sample bottle facing the keypad. Don't twist the sample bottle once it is in the meter as it may scratch the bottle. Cover the meter with the instrument cap. Press the zero key. The display screen will show 0.00. .00. This ensures the meter has been properly zeroed for your test. Remove the bottle from the meter and add the chemical reagent from one DPD free chlorine packet. Place the cap on the bottle and shake for approximately 20 seconds. Wipe the bottle and place back in the meter with the diamond facing the keypad. Cover the meter with the instrument cap and press the read key within one minute of when you added your reagent to the bottle. Record your result along with the sampling location, date, time, 
and sampler initials in your log form. If you don't have a log form, you can contact the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment for a template form. You can now discard the sample and make sure to rinse your bottle. You are now ready to start your total chlorine residual test. It's recommended that you use a separate bottle for each of your free and total tests or to rinse well between samples taken. After rinsing, fill the bottle to the 10 milliliter line with water from the tap. Replace the cap and wipe the bottle with a lint-free cloth to remove any moisture. Press the power key on your meter. The display screen will illuminate and an arrow should indicate you are in the low range. Insert the sample bottle into the meter with the diamond on the sample bottle facing the keypad. Cover the meter with the instrument cap. Press the zero key. The display screen will show 0.00. This ensures the meter has been properly zeroed for your test. Remove the bottle from the meter and add the chemical reagent from one DPD total chlorine packet. Place the cap on the bottle and shake for approximately 20 seconds. Wipe the bottle and place back in the meter with the diamond facing the keypad. Wait three to six minutes, then cover the meter with the instrument cap, press the read key, record your result on your log form. You can now discard the sample and make sure to rinse your bottle. A couple of things to remember about your chlorine residual tests. Total chlorine should always be greater than or equal to free chlorine. If this is not the case, repeat the test to ensure you're following sampling protocols. If this issue persists, you should investigate for potential interferences. Make sure your sample bottles are not scratched and that any lint, moisture, or air bubbles are removed before conducting the test. Also, any manganese or chromium present in the water may produce a darker sample and give a false positive. There are additional procedures available to correct this interference. Refer to the instruction manual for specific details. For this reason, never use a colorimeter to test standing water for chlorine residual if not using the appropriate treatment for interference. If your meter displays a flashing 2.20 on the screen, this means you need to do your chlorine residual test in the high range. Refer to the instruction manual for specific details. You can always refer to your manual for more detailed instructions on how to conduct free and total residual tests in the low and high range. The kits will have an accuracy range. Colorimeter 2 is accurate between 0.02 and 2.00 mg per liter in the low range, and between 0.1 and 8.0 mg per liter in the high range. For this reason, users should consider a residual between 0.03 and 0.05 to be detectable when testing in the low range. For more information related to chlorine residual testing or other standard operating procedures, please visit the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment's website.